Welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we looked at types of data or variables. Where we learned about the three data types, that is qualitative, which is also known as categorical, and quantitative, which is also known as numerical. But in this tutorial, we are going to look at levels of measurement. So without wasting much time, let's start. Now, we have four levels of measurement. The first one is nominal level of measurement. The second is ordinal level of measurement. The third one is interval level of measurement. And the fourth one is ratio level of measurement. So we are going to look at each level of measurement. So let's take the nominal first. Now I'm going to give you an example and use their characteristics to explain them. Okay. So for the nominal, these are some of the examples. Okay. Now let me explain. Now, for nominal level data, they are categorical in nature. And agenda, you can have a group of male or a group of female, isn't it? And the marital status, you can have a group of singles, married, divorced, separated, widowed, and the like. They are categorical, okay? But you cannot rank them. You cannot say female have quality than male or male have quality than female. If you are saying that that's your personal opinion, you cannot impose that ranking on everyone to accept. Okay, when we say five is greater than two, everyone is aware in this world, everyone will accept that it's true that five is greater than two. But for the qualities, we tend to rank these qualities, we don't rank them. So that's one characteristic of nominal level data. Another characteristic is data is grouped into distinct categories. Okay, you cannot be or do two or more at the same time. Like you can be single and married at the same time. And also no numerical or logical order. We said that already. And another characteristic is cannot perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We cannot say male plus female. We cannot add them. Or we cannot get answer for female minus male. You see, so you can perform mathematical operations for them. And since you can perform these mathematical operations, it means you can calculate mean for them also. You can only find the mode. You can also prepare a frequency table for them. Where you have male and its frequency, and then female and its frequency, you get it. For chart, you can draw a pie chart or a bar chart for it as well. Okay. Then let's look at the next one, which is ordinal. Now, for ordinal level data, these are some of the examples. Okay. So let's look at the characteristics. Now, ordinary level data is also categorical. Just like the nominal, it's also categorical. So under the variable educational level, you can have group of high school students, group of bachelor's degree students, master's degree and PhD. But for this one, there's a meaningful order. You can rank. You place more quality on first than second. Second than third. You see that. And then for educational level, we place more quality on PhD than master's. Then on master's than bachelor's degree, then on bachelor's degree than high school certificate. You get it. You can see that both nominal and ordinal are qualities or categorical. But you can't rank nominal, but you can rank ordinal. That's the difference. So your level of agreement with something, or your level of satisfaction, or your social class, or even ranks in the military, there's a meaningful order. Another characteristic is no precise difference between the ranks. There's no specific difference between the ranks. Let me explain. Let's say you are ranking your students in statistics. Now let's assume the person who got the first position had 95%, okay? And the one who got the second position had 90%, okay? And the one who got the third position had 75%. Now, you see that the difference between the one who had the first position and the second position is just five, five points. Because 95 and 90. And you also see that the difference between the one who had the second position and the third position is about 15. Because the second position had 90 and the third position had 75. So you see that the difference between first and second is not the same as the difference between second and third. So that's what we mean by there's no precise difference between the ranks. Okay. Then another characteristic is 
cannot perform arithmetic operations. Just like the nominal, remember, we cannot perform addition, subtraction, and the like for it. So for ordinal also, we cannot perform arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And that tells you that we cannot calculate mean for ordinal level data. But we can find a median, okay? In fact, the best measure for ordinal level data is the median, okay? But you can also find a mode for it, just like the nominal. So let's go to the next one, which is interval. Now for interval, these are some of the examples, okay? Let's look at the characteristics. Now, the first characteristic is, it is numeric with equal intervals between values, okay? It's numeric, as you can see, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. But with equal intervals between values. So the difference between 31 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius will be the same as the difference between 32 degrees Celsius and 33 degrees Celsius. Another characteristic is data can be ordered and the differences are meaningful. So they can be ordered. And we know that 32 degrees is warmer than 31 degrees. And 31 degrees is also warmer than 30 degrees. You get it. Another characteristic is no true zero point. That is, Zero does not mean none, or zero doesn't mean nothing. And the interval level of measurement, when you have zero degrees Celsius, it doesn't mean temperature doesn't exist, okay? Zero doesn't mean non-existence, and the interval level of measurement. It rather means something, okay? When you have zero degrees Celsius, that means a freezing point. Or when you check your time, and it says zero colon zero zero. Does it mean time doesn't exist? No. It actually means it is a beginning of a new day. You see that? So under interval level of measurement, zero does not mean that thing doesn't exist. Zero in this case will mean something. Okay. Then another characteristic is you can perform addition and subtraction, but not multiplication. You remember, under nominal and ordinal, we said they can't perform any arithmetic operation. But for interval, it can only perform addition and subtraction, not multiplication and division. If place A is 15 degrees and place B is 30 degrees, we cannot say place B is twice as hot as place A. Okay, we don't perform multiplication and division for interval level data. Okay. But for interval level data, you can find a mean. Remember I told you for nominal and ordinal, you can't find mean for them. Okay. But interval, you can find the mean. Then let's look at the fourth one, which is ratio. Now for ratio level data, these are some of the examples. So let's look at the characteristics. So the first is, it is numeric, just like interval. It's also numeric. You remember, nominal and ordinal are categorical. But interval and ratio are numeric. Okay. And then the ratio can also be ordered. And the differences and ratios are meaningful. So we can rank them. And you know that someone who earns 15 Ghana cities earns more than the one earning 10,000 Ghana cities. And something that weighs 100 kg is heavier than something that weighs 50 kg. Okay. Another characteristic is. A true zero point exists. In this case, zero means nothing. If someone tells you that his monthly income is zero Ghana cities, it means the person earns nothing for the month. Okay, so you see that under ratio, zero means nothing. Then another characteristic is it supports all mathematical operations addition, subtraction, multiplication. So for the ratio, remember, interval only supports addition and subtraction. But nominal and ordinal do not support any of these arithmetic operations. But for ratio, it supports all arithmetic operations here. So in this case, if person A earns 15,000 Ghana cities and person B earns 30,000 Ghana cities, you can say person B earns twice as much as person A. Or if something weighs 50 kg and another weighs 100 kg, you can see the one that weighs 100 kg is twice as heavy as the one that weighs 50 kg. 
So your income, such as your profits, your wages and salaries, and a ratio level of measurement. Weight, height, length, distance are all under ratio level of measurement. Okay. And you can calculate the mean for data that are on ratio level of measurement. But aside the mean, you can also find the median, the mode, the percentiles, the quartiles, the standard deviation, the range, the variance, the coefficient of variation, and the like. Okay. In our next tutorial, we'll look at data collection methods. And I want you guys to comment below with examples of each levels of measurement. Okay. So it's important to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.